Hi, my name's Rebecca. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse and also a counsellor. Over 20 years ago, I set up a project called Into the Light to provide support and resources and counsel for people that experience sexual abuse. As part of that project now, we're making a series of films about issues that affect us if we've been abused. The issue we're going to look at today is shame, what it is, how it impacts us and weighs out. There was a ring on my doorbell at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning recently and I knew instinctively who it was. I live in a badly insulated flat and I've got a small daughter who likes jumping. As I opened the door, my neighbour stood there. You're an irresponsible parent. You need to control your daughter. The noise upstairs is constant, she moaned. As I shut the door behind her, I analysed what I was feeling. And what it was, was shame. But was it really my shame? It's fine to ask me to keep my daughter quiet, but the way she asked me was totally out of order. And that is the problem with shame. We tend to embrace the shame that isn't ours. Shame is the big issue with abuse. Victims of abuse often carry the shame that doesn't belong to them, but belongs to the abuser. And Penny Parks explains this really well in her book called Rescuing the Inner Child. What she says is this, the aggressor or abuser projects the blame and guilt onto the child and the child accepts that projection as truth. It's like life imprisonment for a crime that someone else has committed. So abuse usually enters us from our childhood through a variety of reasons. And these are usually abandonment, rejection, unmet needs and expectations, and abuse. And that could be physical, emotional, or sexual. I think there are two different types of shame. One I would say was illegitimate shame or guilt. And that's about when you've made a bad choice. Say if you go around taking things out of people's bags. The way out of that is to get some support, do some learning and change your behaviour. And there's a resolution to that. But there's another kind of shame, which I would say is illegitimate shame or guilt. And that's feelings of blame and guilt when we haven't actually done anything wrong. We haven't made any bad choice. It's about how we feel inside. It's a core identity and a feeling of worthlessness. We can attempt to overcome these shameful feelings by different behaviour patterns. For example, perfectionism, defiance, obsessive behaviour patterns. Think for a moment. How do you feel when you make a mistake? Say you spill a cup of coffee in front of others. What are the messages that go through your mind? Are they negative? Are they shame-based? The way out of shame is to put the shame and the abuse back on the abuser in terms of intention and power. So start thinking about what were your real choices at the time? What was your intention and what was the abuser's intention? And that's despite any exchanges that might have taken place. That could be affection, money, dancing lessons, whatever. It all comes back to original intention. So what was your motive and what was the person's motive when you met them? Who was leading? Who was being led? Who had the real power in that situation, even if they were old or frail? What would you say to a younger person who told you today they were being abused? The most important way out of shame is to talk about it. And the more ashamed you feel about something, probably the more you need to talk about it. So try and share your secrets with trustworthy people. That could be your friends, a counsellor, a support group, whatever works with you. Work on replacing shame messages with new positive messages about yourself. Decreasing the shame will help you to come out of isolation and have better relationships with others. My take home message, if you feel shame, talk about it.